you good morning praise god god bless you this morning god bless you all this morning praise god i just thank god for waking me up this morning another sunday morning praise god this is my off day but it's not my off day to talk about the word of god praise god hallelujah you know i can be on my off day sometime and uh the job that is called me want me to come in like i don't have nothing to do so i'm like to myself now today now what happened yesterday all that work i done for somebody else oh no not today thank you jesus amen but anyway i want to talk to you about um um a call for wholehearted commitment a call for wholehearted commitment still talking about doing what's good doing what's right you know all these things in this book praise god because he wants us to do what's good he want to be good he want to do what's right all the time and what god commanded you know what he teaching us and want us to do amen i'm gonna read uh deuteronomy chapter six starting with um verse one it said these are the command degrees and regulation that the Lord your God command me to teach you. You must obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. And you and your children and grandchildren must fear the Lord your God as long as you live. If you obey all his degrees and command, you will enjoy long life. Listen closely, Israel, and be careful to obey. Then all will go well with you, and you will have many children in the land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone, and you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed and when you are getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead. As reminder, write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gate praise God that's the book of Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 uh, uh, verse 10 says the Lord your God will soon bring you into the land he swore to give you when he made a vow to your ancestors Abraham and Isaac and Jacob it is a land with large prosperous city that you did not build the house will be richly stocked with good you did not produce you will draw water from cistern you did not dig and you will eat your you will eat from vine yard and olive trees you did not plant when you eat when you have eaten your field in his in this land be careful not to forget the Lord who rescued you from, from slavery in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and serve him. When you take an oath, you must use only his name. That's also the book of Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. That you must not worship any of the gods of neighbor, neighboring nation. For the Lord your God who lives among you is a jealous God. His anger will flare up against you and he will wipe you from the face of the earth. You must not test the Lord your God as you did when you complained at Messiah. You must diligently obey the commandments of the Lord your God, all the law and the greed that has given has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight, so all will go well with you. Then you will enter and occupy the good land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors. 
you will drive out all the enemies living in the land, just as the Lord said you would. That's all the book of that's also in the book of Luke, chapter four, verse twelve. In the future, your children will ask you what is the meaning of these laws, degrees, and regulation that the Lord our God has commanded us to obey. Then you must tell them you were a pharaoh slave in the Egypt, but the land I mean but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand. The Lord did miraculous signs and wonders before our eyes, dealing terrifying blows against Egypt and Pharaoh and all his people. He brought us out of Egypt so he could give us his land he had sworn to give our ancestors. And the Lord, our God, command us to obey. Obey all the degrees and to fear him so he can continually to bless us and preserve our lives as he has done to this day. For we will be counted as righteous when we obey all the commandment the Lord our God has given us. Praise God. All of them. He has said some all his commandments. That he have gave that he have given that he had given us praise God when the Lord was when the Lord your God bring you into the land you are about to enter and occupy he was clear away many nations ahead of you the Hittites, Gargites, Amorites, Canadians, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jerbosite, the these seven nations are greater and more numerous than you. When the Lord your God had these nations over to you, you and you conquer them, you must completely destroy them, make no treaties with them, and show them no mercy. You must do and marry with them. Do not let your daughters and sons marry their sons and daughters, for they will lead your children away from me to worship other gods. That's what God be like, don't put yourself in someone that don't believe, not on his level, not want to do what's right. You do not, don't even love the Lord, don't even want to serve him. You know, that's unequal, he said, don't be with unequally yoked. You know, basically, you know, do not be, in, uh, be with unequally yoked unbelievers. Because it won't work. One believe and one not, one want to do what's right and one don't, it don't work. Good and bad don't mix. So they will lead you. They will lead your children away from you know from worship of the God. Then the anger of the Lord will burn against you, and He will quickly destroy you. This is what you must do. You must break down their pagan altar and shatter their shatter and their scare pillars. Cut down their aspirous poles and burn down idols. Idols, where you are holy people. And he and and we are holy, or you are a holy people who belong to the Lord your God of all the peoples on earth, and the Lord will and the Lord your God has chosen you to be His own special treasure. That's also First Peter chapter two, verse uh, verse nine. Praise God. He says the Lord did not set His heart on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other nations, for you were the smallest of all nations. Rather it was simply that the Lord loves you and he was keeping the oaks he had sworn to your zesters. That is why the Lord rescued you with such a strong hand from your slavery and from the oppressive hand of Pharaoh. Kings of Egypt understand therefore that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is a faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations and lavishes his unfallen love on those who love him and obey his command. But he does not hesitate to punish and destroy those who reject him. Therefore you must obey all these commands, degrees, and regulations I am giving you today. You listen to these regulations and faithful and faithfully obey them. The Lord your God will keep his covenant of unfallen love 
with you. And he promised with an oath to your ancestors. He will love you and bless you. And he will give you many children. He will give fertility to your land and your animals when you arrived in the land. He swore to give your ancestors. And you will have large harvests of grand new wine and olive oil and great herds of cattle, sheep, and goat. You will be blessed above all the nation of the earth. None of the men and women will be childless. And all your livestock will bear young. And the Lord will perfect you from all sickness. He will not let you suffer from the terrible disease you knew in Egypt, but he will inflict them on all your enemies. The one didn't want to, uh, the one want to do you wrong, didn't want to uh, believe in you when you tell them about the road of God, want to turn their back on you, the one want to curse you and do you wrong. I mean, you know, just your enemies. You know, the one just hates you. That's what God said. If he'll turn all that on them, praise God. So you must you must destroy all the nations the Lord your God had had you you must destroy all the nations the Lord your God hands over to you. Show them to mercy. Show them no mercy and do no worship their God, or they will trap you. Perhaps you will think to yourself, How can we ever conquer these nations that are so much more powerful than we are? But don't be afraid of them. Just remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all the land of Egypt. Remember the great terror the Lord your God sent against them. You saw it all with your own eyes. And remember the miraculous signs and wonders and the strong hand and the powerful arm which with which he brought you out of Egypt. The Lord, your God, will use this same power against all the people you fear. And then the Lord, your God, will send terror to drive out the few survivors still hiding from you. Do not be afraid of those nations. For the Lord, your God, is among you. And he is a great an awesome God. Praise God. He's an awesome God. The Lord your God will drive those nations out ahead of you little by little. You will not clear them away all that all at once. Otherwise the wise animal would multiply too quickly for you. But the Lord your God will hand them over to you and he will throw them into a completely confusion until they are destroyed. He will put their kings in your power and you will erase their name from the face of the earth. No one will be able to stand against you and you will destroy them all. You must burn their idols in fire and you must not covet the silver of gold that covered them. You must not take it or it will become a trap to you. You must, I mean, for it is this detestable, disstable to the Lord your God. Do not bring any detestable object into your home, for then you will be destroyed just like them. You must utterly detest such things. For they are set apart for destruction. And that's also the book of Leviticus chapter 27 verse 28 to 29. Praise God. I thank him for this word. Let me to share with you for you to take heed in it and study and know for yourself. And do what it say, do obey. God said keep his commandment. He wants you to obey him. Over and over and over as I always say. Is that a book? It's already written. It's already said. I didn't write it. I didn't say it. This is what God said. Praise God. But anyway, I want to pray for each and every last one of you. I want to thank you for tuning on and watching. 
Heavenly Father, faithful Lord is watching. God bless you. God keep you. I pray the Lord will uh, speak to you and lead you and guide you and open up your mind and your soul and your heart for Him in Jesus' name. For Him to lead you and guide you and show you your way of life, which way to go, the right way to go. I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus, you will take heed and to do the will of God for your life. Not just talking about it, not just listening, but obeying and to do and take heed and take action in it. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. God keep you. Nothing works without God. In Jesus' name I pray. I rebuke every sickness and every disease. You may not be feeling good right now. You might have some kind of pain. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know what you're going through, but God knows what you're going through. God sees it all. He don't want you to worry. He don't want you to stress. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to uh, live. He wants you to stay strong. You know, and meditate, and obey, and do what he say do. You know, he is God. He wants you. He wants you to be alive. He wants you to stay alive. He wants you to be strong. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have all the things which you desire, according to his glory, to his riches. He wants you to have it all. He wants. He just wants you to keep it first. Keep him first. Keep him first. Not the material. Not the thing that's wrong. He wants to keep him first at all times. Nothing before God. Cause he's a jealous God. He's an angry guy. He'll get angry when you do them things before him. Because he'll cause things to happen. And I know he loves you. He still cares for you. He wants you to seek him first. Because he is the kingdom of God. He is God Almighty. He is the one, the beginning, the end. And nothing, you know, don't work without him. Nothing can't even, you know, pass without God. But I depend on my name of Jesus. You take heed and do the will of God for your life. Let him in your heart. Let him in your mind, your soul, your spirit. Ask God to help you, whatever situation that is, whatever you're going through. He's already, he already know. He wants you to talk to him. He wants to speak out to him. He wants to, uh, you know, turn to him. So you turn to the world, so you turn to your friends, your family. He wants you to turn to him. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you and God keep you. I pray that you know, no weapon form against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. When you are somebody in Christ Jesus, you know, you are somebody that I know is some good and you're not always bad in you in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. And I pray that you just be have victory over your life. Have joy in your life, over your life. I pray no uh, devil in hell won't destroy you in Jesus' name. I pray the Lord just protect you and lead you and guide you, whether, whether you're about to go in, coming out, whatever it is. I pray the Lord just be uh, protected and guard his angels around you in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name I pray. I pray each and every last one of you keep your joy that the devil, the devil is defeated. Get your praise on. Keep your joy in Jesus' name. Give God all the thanks and praise every day. Not just today. Not just because it's Sunday. But every day in Jesus' name I pray. Glory be to God. The devil is defeated. Tell that devil get behind you. None of your feet in Jesus' name I pray. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. God bless you. And God keep you always, always, always. God is awesome, God, you know, and um, nothing works without him, you know, he's awesome, you know, it's like, you know, it's like in a time of trouble, you know, when you just, you know, when, when you just know who you are in Christ Jesus, you know, you just be in that time of trouble, you know, you know, you be in that need, you know, God is still right in, you know, he will help you, you got to know who he is, because he know who you are, you got to know who God is and how he do and what he'll do, you got to know how he'll work it for you, work it out for you. In Jesus' name, he will work it out for you. You know, it's trust in him. Give him that chance. In Jesus' name, glory be to God. Anyway, God bless you. God keep you. Till next time, remember, God loves you, and so do I. You know, don't give up on him. Don't give up on him. You know, he's not going to give up on you. You know, he's giving you a chance. He woke you up this morning for you to be on your way. And here you are, blessed another day. Praise God. Hallelujah. So anyway, until next time, God bless you. God keep you. And remember, God loves you, and so do I. Take care.